Hey guys, welcome back. Let's get the emergency stop switch wired to the controller. This is a simple two wire connection, one going to the 12 volt, the other going to the pin labeled E stop. I'm tying a knot in mine for a little bit of strain relief. Here I'm testing the spindle ground. There are many people that have received the spindle without the ground pin connected. This is a safety risk and should be addressed before using as you could risk electrocution. As you can see, I have proper ground here, so moving on. Let's tin the spindle wires. And the terminals we're soldering to. Now solder these together. I was not happy with the job I did here so I reflowed the solder off camera as well. I also added some liquid electrical tape for future protection. Onto the VFD end. I have crimped the ground wire from the wall to the ground wire of the spindle as well as the shielding of the spindle wire. These will all go to the ground terminal of the VFD. My VFD is a 110 volt wired with single phase, so I'm connecting neutral to the R terminal, my hot to the T terminal, and ground to the ground terminal. As for wiring the spindle, you can get away with any combination of the U, V, and W terminals as long as the ground wire is correct. If the spindle spins the wrong way, you just need to swap two of the spindle wires. Time for bang test. No bang. Let's keep moving. Here I'm connecting the wires to have the VFD controlled by the NVUM controller. We need the DCM, ACM, FOR and VI pins connected. Make sure that your jumper is set to VI which is leftmost on this VFD. Cover it up and move over to the other end of this cable. Here we are connecting the DCM and ACM to the ground one, the VSO to the VI pin for our PWM output and the out one to our FOR pin for spindle direction. Hook up some water cooling lines, which are straightforward, press and then tighten.
Finally, let's mount the spindle. I have moved the z-axis all the way to where the wasteboard will be for two reasons. I can mount the spindle in the position that will give you the most z-axis range, and it will also mount up relatively straight and be a good start for when I want to trim the spindle. Also, here you can see a 3D printed spindle mount. I knock this one up as additional support until I get a second 80mm spindle mount. You can see I type the aluminium one first as it should bear all the weight and then I snug up the top with the 3D printed one. Let's plug the spindle in and we are ready to move on to our software portion, which will be the next video. Thanks again for watching guys, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Once this build is complete I'll be diving into more projects and really showing what this machine is capable of.